I made this video for all the potential beekeepers who are thinking to themselves, can I really do this? My answer to you is yes, you can. Today I picked up the three pound package of bees that I ordered and started a hive from scratch for the first time. I'm sure I didn't do everything correctly, but it was easier than I thought. I recorded the entire process so that you could see what I was doing and I could explain what I was doing at the same time. That's actually a hive that I bought in the fall. Um, it was already established colony and uh, so I haven't started one by myself yet. This is the first one that I'm going to start by myself, but I have this colony already. Um, so what I'm trying to do is remove two brood frames. Brood frames mean um, frames that have eggs in them, larvae, uh, because that's what's going to act as almost like an anchor uh, for my other colony. It's not essential, but it is recommended. Um, if you have the opportunity to have brood in your new colony, then you should do it. So I'm going to take two brood frames out of this, out of this colony. What you're looking at there is a feed chamber that I just put in the spring. That's a little raft on the top that is floating and underneath it is sugar syrup that the bees are eating. I'm going to remove that and there are the bees. If you notice it's kind of swampy where I am. I didn't really notice, I didn't know actually that it was going to be swampy. Uh, it was bone dry in the fall. Uh, we just moved into the house and now I find out it floods there in the spring so I am moving the hive location. So what I'm doing there is I'm smoking them lightly um, with the smoker. That's going to cause them to go down into the chamber because what I'm going to try to do is remove um, the frames. Those two things that I'm taking out, those are, um, I think they're called uh, apivar. They're apivar strips. It's medicated strips to remove tracheal mites. Tracheal mites are one of the number one enemies and culprits for disease and killers on the honeybees. They uh, go up into the throat and cause a lot of problems and they can even wipe out an entire colony. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my pry tool and admittedly I am a novice so you can critique me if you wish if you're an expert but this is for beginners. What I'm trying to do is break the seal. Um, actually this seal has not been broken in almost a year in this brood chamber so it's really really tight. I'm just trying to slowly move it back and forth until I can get it out and then carefully move it up. The reason it is so difficult to get out is because bees produce something called propolis. It's kind of like their glue and they use it to hold everything in place and it does a good job. So I just slowly work it back and forth. I'm going to smoke them a little bit because I did agitate them. It only takes a little bit. You know, you'll see they go right down. So again I'll keep working it till I pop one side. Now that I have one side I'll work on the other side. That pops. It will carefully remove the frame. And I'm going to be really, really careful when I pull out this frame because I don't want to injure the queen or lose the queen. Since I am pulling it right from the middle, I figured there was going to be brood, and there is. You can see the amber cells I guess they would be. Uh, it's like a dark brown and they are capped and I also did notice that they're uncapped cells. I could see the larva so I do know that there's a queen alive in the colony which is a good sign. I'm really glad to see that after winter. So what I'm doing now is carefully looking for the queen. The queen has a much longer lower body, an extended thorax I believe it is. Um, so I'm really trying to see if I can see the queen. There's so many bees. As a novice, I can't be sure. So what I'll wind up doing is just shaking the bees down into the chamber just in case the queen is on there. And then what I just did right there, there was a huge cluster of bees. So I smoked them. I wanted to make sure that the queen wasn't there. And when I smoke them, they move away 
and I was able to see that the queen was not there. You can see the huge brood pattern there. Those are all capped larvae ready to hatch. That's what I want for my new colony. That's what's going to anchor the bees down. Now you'll see how easy other frames are to remove. I'm going to do the same exact process, smoke the top, let them go down, and pull the second, and again I'll look for the queen. Around this time I realized that I forgot my bee brush. I do have a bee brush, but I forgot it in my haste, so I wound up using my hand to brush bees off after I shook. Again, just really carefully looking for the queen. And this also was a good comb for a brood pattern. It really was my biggest fear through this entire thing that I was gonna somehow injure or take the queen with me to the other hive. But I think I was careful enough. Again, I'm using my hand as a brush. I do have a brush, but sometimes you forget it. So now that I'm certain that the queen is not on those, I put them aside. Check that one out one more time just to be sure. It's okay if you take bees with you to the new colony. I just wanted to be extra certain that I didn't have a queen with me. And now what I'm going to do is going to move over all of the other existing frames to tighten the box up. Again, I'm going to take extra care because I do not want to injure the queen. And since I knew that there were brood there and actually uncapped brood, I know the queen is very close. So I'm being extra, extra careful. Once I get all the frames over nice and tight, I will add two new frames with new foundation. That's another thing I forgot to bring down with me, but after the video I returned to the hive and I added two new combs that were not drawn out. They just have plastic foundations and eventually the bees will draw those out with wax and fill them with honey. I want to put them towards the outside because that's typically where the bees make their honey. You can see in that last frame the light yellow color. That's capped honey. Pretty exciting stuff. So there you go, the last frame is over, and then again I came back and I did put in two new frames. But for now, I'm done with this hive. Just going to smoke the bees, get them to go down, and I'll temporarily put the top cover back on. It's much easier when you can lay your equipment right next to the hive when it's not a swamp by mistake. Live and learn. So that pretty much wraps it up. I'm going to take everything over to the new hive and it's time to set up the new hive and unbox the three pound package of bees. Okay, so we're in the new location. As you can see it is much, much drier 
and those are the two frames that I took from the other hive. I wanted to show you the brood pattern. You can see the capped cells easily and the uncapped cells. That's what I was looking for to put into the new hive because the bees are going to be instinctually drawn. So I'm just going to put those aside and then that is the three pound package of bees that I picked up. As you can see they're huddled around the queen and they're also feeding on the feeder which is that aluminum can. This looks a lot like a swarm of bees if you ever see it in a tree. That's what they're doing. They're protecting their queen and they're feeding. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make space for them. I want them to be right in the middle and that's where I'm going to drop the brood frames. So I'll take a bunch out and then I'll put the new frames in and make an opening between them. So I'm dropping one of the frames from the other hive and then the other frame. But I'm going to keep a space in between them and that's where I'm going to drop the bees. Okay, now it's time. Use my pry tool to take off the top little wooden panel that covers the feed box. Just gentle pressure on all four sides, eventually it comes up. And there you can see that's the feed box, the aluminum can. Now there's a shipping strip that also holds down the tab, that little cord that is holding the queen's box. I had a little trouble with this, I don't know why. But I do eventually get it. And this should be the last piece. There you go. And then you can kind of see there's a yellow strip going back. I've seen a lot of videos online and they're a little different, but right now I'm going to pry out the feed can. And I'm going to do it just enough because I don't want to let all the bees out, but I do want to get the queen out. So I pull it up just enough and they're trying to escape already. I mean, it'll only be a few. You really don't have to worry. But now I'm going to pull the tab that's attached to the queen's cage and lift her up and I'm going to put the feeder back. And there you have it. That is the queen. You can see how the bees are drawn to the queen. She's in a cage but they're all over her. What they actually do is they try to feed her through the cage. They have really long tongues and they stick out and try to feed her food, even though there are bees in there with the queen. I'm getting those workers off so that you can kind of see the queen, but the focus wasn't so good. But you can see there's attendance in there with the queen. That is a cork plug you just saw that I have to take out. There's actually two cork plugs on it. You have to be very careful to take out the cork plug that is on the candy side. There's a big candy square almost and then a cork. The candy the bees can eat through, the cork they cannot. The whole purpose of that is it's a time release mechanism. So now you can kind of see the focus when it's close is not very good. So now that I have that out, I'm going to put her down and I'm going to take out the feed can and proceed to shake the bees into their new home. Again, this is my very, very first time, so I was just following instructions. I was actually amazed at how easy it was to shake the bees out. I expected them to go crazy but they really just fell to the bottom board 
and that was it. You can see it took some coaxing, but it wasn't bad, and there weren't bees swarming around. I tried to get out as many as I could, and then I laid it by the front of the hive, and any remaining ones could eventually fly out and into the entrance. Now the next step was to move that brood frame over, and then I'm going to place the queen cage between them. I'll sandwich her. I'm going to make sure that the grate where she can breathe is parallel with the frames, not smushed against it. Also, contrary to other videos that I've seen online, I'm putting the candy plug up as per advice from multiple professional beekeepers at my association. The reason they said was because if one of the attendants or worker bees inside dies, it's possible for them to clog the hole. Their dead body could clog the exit and then the queen couldn't get out. It makes a lot of sense. And now what I'm going to do is take the other frames and fill up the hive. At this point, I could already see the bees climbing up the brood frame. It was really amazing. I tried to fit that last frame, but it wouldn't fit, obviously, because the queen cage is in there. Later, I'll remove the queen cage once she's freed and that last frame will fit in. The next step is to set up their feeding. That is a one-to-one -one sugar solution. You can see, kind of, that there's holes poked in that lid. I was worried when I turned it over, when I was inside, that it would just come out, but then I was told by an expert, if you just give it one pound, it stops stripping. So now you just take the top cover, which I'll show you here, I'm going to put it down on the box, careful not to crush any bees. And then I'll slide the feeder right down, and that's what they're going to eat. And now I'm going to get a empty super, which acts as a perfect spacer. And then I will put my top cover. So you can see, it really was not that difficult. I'll sum it all up here. Well, there you have it, we're all done. All in all, it wasn't that bad. Actually, the unboxing of the bees into their new home was easier than I could ever imagine. They were super docile. They let me shake them right in there. I was actually worried that I was hurting them, but once I got it all together, it was a matter of minutes before they were crawling around exploring their new home and greeting the queen. To be honest, the most stressful part was pulling the two capped brood frames because I really knew at that and I wanted to make sure I didn't get the queen or crush her or take her with me or, you know, who knows. But I was pretty sure I did not see the queen. Um, I was sure that the queen was there because there's uncapped brood. So, let's see. I think it was success. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Happy beekeeping.